everybody just take a moment and give him 10 seconds of praise?
everybody with me now. I want to hear every voice in this place think about the chaos in the world, and despite all that was going on around them, they were still lifting up a praise. What privilege in America. Yes. We're That's spoiled right. in America. That's right. The fact we can have these lights on, it's a privilege. The fact that we could have the electronics to be able to play so that it projects out there, right? that's a privilege. And we have all these privileges, all these amenities, and I don't think we should take them for granted. And I don't think we should take God's blessings for granted either. Because God really is blessed us. God has blessed this people abundantly, and we're living in the overflow of God's blessing, even now, to this very day. Despite your political beliefs, whatever, we are still living in that overflow. And I know that no matter what chaos comes, God's still going to be there. And even if we get to the point that it's like in Ukraine where we can't even have the lights on, I know God's still the firm foundation. I know Christ is still the firm foundation. And I can have chaos around me, but I can still be glad and I can keep my head up and I can say that I will be glad because I know that Jesus got it. I read the end of the book, we win. I'm going to say, everybody say this with me. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken. Just worship him for who he is. I've never been more glad that I. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine 
and puts them into practices like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Church, yet it did not fall. Because it had the firm foundation on the rock. God is Emmanuel, God with us. He does not dwell just in a place, but he dwells in you, and he dwells in you. He dwells in each and every person in this house. So whenever things come in your life, and you got that firm foundation, you don't gotta worry. Cause if you build your house on him,
I just like you to stand in reverence for the reading of the word of the Lord. I'm just going to read one scripture to start, and you can stay seated after that. But it's found in the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, and the 34th verse. This is one that should be familiar to Christians, and it says, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, it's crazy in this world today. We see a lot of things happening, but I believe God always will take care of his people. And I think God's people need to understand as proud as you are to be an Americans and be in a country where you're free, understand that, yeah, we're Americans, but we're also kingdom. I said, we're also kingdom. Yes. Yes. And whether you're in Ukraine or whether you're wherever, Ethiopia, we're all part of the kingdom called the kingdom of God. Amen. And I believe God's people need to start seeing themselves as kingdom people because in a kingdom you have a king. And guess what? We have a king in this kingdom, and his name is Jesus. He's sitting on his throne. Amen? Amen. I want to talk to you today from this subject. Be rich. Everybody say, be rich. Be rich. Now, some of you, if I, I'm, if I just stop there, some of you say, oh, I would like this message. Lord, send the money, right? <laughs> we ain't going there. Be rich toward God. Amen. I want you to say that with me. Be rich. Be rich. Be rich. Toward God. Let's pray. God, I just thank you for this time. And Lord, I just pray that you would just anoint my mind, mouth, and heart to speak the anointed, life-changing, course-correcting word of God. I pray every word is all of you and none of me. And I pray over the next few moments that you would just anoint these lips of clay to speak what you want to speak to us today. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done in this place. Three baptisms today to God be the glory. Amen. Three lives changed today. Three people buried with him in baptism. But Lord, I pray now that our hearts are open and we'll receive from the word of God. The word that changes us, that cuts away. The word that heals, the word that purifies. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say, Amen. 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 You can be seated. I want to, as the Lord <laughs> permits over the next several weeks, I want to talk to you about kingdom lessons. Kingdom lessons. And Jesus is in the middle of teaching. And we're going to be in Luke, the 12th chapter, if you want to follow along. Jesus is in the middle of teaching about life in the kingdom. And all of a sudden, Jesus was interrupted. I'm glad it just didn't know it only happened to me sometimes. Jesus was interrupted in the middle of his teaching. And we find this in Luke, the 12th chapter, and the 13th verse. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide inheritance with me. Oh, what a random request and question to ask of Jesus. He's teaching about kingdom, but he takes this time, then all of a sudden you'll see he illustrates some principles to us. But here's this guy, he interrupts Jesus, and he says, Master, tell my brother to give me what belongs to me. In other words, I just want what is mine. I want my inheritance. I want what is rightfully, right, right, what rightfully belongs to me. And when thinking about this, this is kind of a random question to ask Jesus. But I got to thinking about this. How many of us, I'm not setting you up by this question, how many of us one day is looking forward to retirement? Yeah, a few of us. Some of you are afraid to raise your hand. Let me just ask this. How many of you are already retired? Rub it in. Put your hand down now. Come on now. We don't want to leave it up for too long. Yeah, we'll pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> but when you think about retirement, a lot of us have different thoughts about retirement. Some people, when I say, what do you want to do when you retire? And I've heard people say, well, I'm never going to retire. I'm going to work till I die. That's not the way to do it. Some people say, well, I see myself, Pastor, sitting on the beach in Naples, Florida. Oh. Relaxing, watching the waves come in. Jimmy's with me there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Living with my Aunt Jean until she throws me out. That's where she's from, Naples, Florida. But where do, you, where do you see yourself when you retire? Like, you see yourself living at the beach? Do you see yourself spending time with your grandkids and then you sugar them all up and send them back? I know some of you do that, right? My parents have been guilty of that. It's, it's okay in the natural to think about retirement. And one day, hopefully, possibly, we all can do that. 
But here's the question I want you to think about that's more important than when you retire and what you do when you retire. What are you going to do for the kingdom when you retire from your secular job? Because here's what I want you to understand. In the kingdom that we belong to, there is no retirement. Jesus Christ, the, our king, will let us know there is no retirement. In other words, ministry never stops. That's right. When you're a kingdom citizen, you understand that you should always be involved in ministry. We have enough Christians sitting on the sidelines. We really do. That's right. That's right. Come on. Now understand your roles may change at times. But there's no retirement in the kingdom. I understand someday I may not be the lead pastor here. There'll be a transition. But guess what? I'm still going to be a part of the kingdom. And I'm still going to be working in the kingdom. Right. We all have jobs and responsibilities and things that God wants us to do in the kingdom. So in the kingdom, there is no sitting on the beach. In the kingdom, there is no uh, enjoy an easy street. In the kingdom, we will continually work until one day we are with our king for all of eternity. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. So to set the stage, this guy asked Jesus this question. He said, tell my brother to give me my inheritance. And Jesus wasn't there to participate in legal rulings and get into court type things. That wasn't why he came. Look what he said in verse 14. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? In other words, what Jesus was trying to say here, buddy, you're missing the point. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. <laughs> and he said unto him, take heed and beware of what? What's that word? What does that mean? Anybody know what that means? Yeah, wanting what somebody else has. It says, beware of this, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesses. And this goes against our American belief and culture. He said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. We're in a culture where everybody wants everything. This is not the American way, but this is the kingdom way. Amen? Yeah. And we're kingdom people. We need to think like kingdom people. Amen? Amen. Now, Jesus is basically saying, listen, you guys are missing the point here. And then he says, in other words, he says, I'm going to take you a little bit deeper. And he does this in verse 16. He said, he spoke a parable to them. And he said, the grounds of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. Let me just tell you, Ben Carson said this, and I like it. He said, if you were born in America, you already hit the lottery. Yes. Amen. If you're born in this country, you already hit the lottery. You're already blessed beyond anything that you can imagine if you were just born here. So Jesus is talking. He said, and there's a, a rich man. And he said, he had plentiful. Understand, it wasn't a bad thing to have plenty. It wasn't a bad thing that what he planted was product, productive and his uh, flocks, his, his fields flourished. That wasn't a bad thing at all. His business prospered. and That was a good thing. But where evil came in this parable when this productive farmer forgot the source of what he had. See, you can have stuff as long as stuff don't have you. Don't have you. I'm amazed how Christian people value things so much that are of this world. There's nothing more important than a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Nothing. I was in the restaurant last Sunday and... We were having lunch, and the waitress came over, and she had an accident, and she spilled her drink all over my pants. And I was like, this is the only church pants I have. <laughs> Honey, you're going to have to wash these this week, I guess. And I could see a look on her face, and she was so upset, and I said, oh, it's okay. No big deal. Accidents happen. And uh, later on, I went over when we were leaving, and I said, She's like, you, are you mad at me? I said, well, I said, you bathed me in pop. And you owe me one right now. And she said, what do you mean? I said, here's a card for Hope Church, and I want you to come and visit me because you owe me one. <laughs> Amen. And she took the information. She said, you know what? Some Sunday I'm going to walk through those doors. I said, I hope you do. And just fast forward, a Friday night I was with a friend, and the same thing happened to him, and I enjoyed it so much because it wasn't me. And I, I will say I might have rubbed it in a little bit. <laughs> and after he went from anger to calming down to laughing and all this, and I said, you know that same, my wife spoke up, you know the same thing just happened to him on 
on uh, sun, Sunday. He said, well, what did you do? She said, you know what he did? He went and invited her to church. <laughs> so I got to say that my friend actually did the same thing. He didn't invite one. He invited two waitresses to church. Amen? Amen. 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 See, that's what it is when you're kingdom-minded. Amen? Amen? Because material things can be replaced, but the relationship with God and seeing a life change and save is for eternity. Amen? Amen? Amen. In other words, I want to tell that lady, you know what? I may be drenched in pop, but you picked the right person to spill this on me because I'm getting you to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's how we use it, how we view it. We have to be kingdom-minded. Amen? Amen? Now, understand that sometimes, you know, I'm amazed, too, at the prices people will pay for things with a name brand on it. Sometimes people will just pay extraordinary amount of money for things just because there's a name on it. Well, my shoe says this. My shoe don't even have a name on it. But anyway, now don't get me wrong. There are some things that I think the name brand's important. Like, you know, we're in Pittsburgh. When you get ketchup, what kind should you have? Uh, it ain't godly to have any other else. <laughs> now, mustard. What about mustard? French's. Yeah, I'm French's. All right. Uh, we're going to divide the church right now. What about mayo? No, no, no. Oh, there's a couple of miracles. <laughs> it, it's interesting what people pay. I even have, have met ministers that wear, want to wear a $3,000 suit when they preach because they want to look good. I said, man, you give me 250 bucks, you can have my whole, my whole wardrobe. Right? Like, I do have a name brand t-shirt on today. Some of you might have heard of this. It's called Fruit of a Loom. Name brand. But here's this rich man, back to the story. He had everything he wanted at his fingertips. And understand, when much is given, given to you, much is required. Yes. And I think anybody who lives in this country, there's much required of us because we're blessed to be living in this country. We're blessed. And look what happens in verse 17. He says, and he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Everybody say, I. I. He said, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. He was asking himself the question, what do I do with my wealth? Maybe the question should have been this. God, what do you want me to do with what you bless me with? Maybe he should have asked God and sought, was seeking after God. Because understand, it's always more blessed to give than receive. And here's a man who was blessed with plentiful. And we see his self-centeredness here by saying, what am I going to do with all that I have? And look what his solution was in verse 18. He said, then this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, and I will say to my soul. And a lot of people are good at this. And we'll talk about this in a moment. He said, I will say to my soul that thou hast done much good. Laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, he says, I have done well for myself. Do you know people that like this here, that they like to talk about themselves a lot? You hear a lot of I, I, I. You know these people sometimes, I'll just pat, pat them on the back on purpose because I think they're getting ready to break their arm because they keep trying to do it themselves. So I'm like, you know what, I'll just go ahead and give you a compliment because you're going to break your arm trying to pat yourself on the back. Here's this man that he was saying, ah, I'm going to build bigger barns, and then my soul's going to sing, and I'm going to say, look what I had done. Nowhere in this do we see him saying, God, what do you want to do with what you bless me with? How do you want me to funnel this to ministry? How do you want me to funnel this? How do you want me to bless other people with what you bless me with? Nowhere do you see that. And you can actually compare him, this gentleman to one that we find in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, it says this, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. For you have said in your heart, watch what he said. This is Satan, Lucifer. I, here's the word, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the most highest on the clouds. 
God will be like the most high. You see the parallels here when it's all about us, I, me, myself, I, nobody else. It's all about me. Yes. And let's face it, we're all guilty of being like that sometimes. And that's why I believe Jesus put this story in here to remind us we are kingdom. We are kingdom. Does somebody hear me? We are kingdom. This man was preparing for Easy Street. Let me just say this. Easy Street does not exist in the kingdom. That's right. I said there is no Easy Street in the kingdom. We are always working and be, being busy in the kingdom. Yes. Look what God said to him. You better pay attention to this. But God said unto him, Full. Mm -hmm. Come on. What? In the American, the standard of an American, this man was successful. This man had the nice suit, drove the nice car, lived in a nice house, had a nice retirement plan. That's success. That's the American dream. But it's not kingdom. Wow. Be quiet in here. Come on. It's okay. I'm preaching to myself too. Don't worry about it. We're all getting beat up a little bit today. God said, fool. I never want to hear God call me that. That's right. That's right. He said, this night, your soul will be required of you. Then, it says, then, who will those things be which you have provided? In other words, he said, all the things that you have are going to become meaningless. Listen, when you stand before God, he will not ask you, let me see your portfolio and how you did. He won't ask you what type of house you lived in or what kind of car you drove on, or if you wore a Fruit of Balloon t-shirt or you wore a designer t-shirt. That's not what he's going to ask you. What are you doing with the things that God has given to you? It's okay to take care of your family. Don't get me wrong when I'm saying it's okay to plan. It's okay to do that. But also understand that your kingdom and everything you have in this world is temporary. It will all pass away, yes. including you if the Lord tarries. That's right. This guy said, I'm going to take my increase. I'm going to tear down the barns. I'm going to go ahead and keep building bigger barns. Look at the way Paul put this in 1 Corinthians. It kind of sums up. This in 1 Corinthians 15 and 32, it says, If the dead are not raised, let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. What's Paul saying here? If the dead are not raised, in other words, if, if Jesus Christ didn't come and become the resurrection, truth, and the life, then we can go ahead and pursue our own little dreams, our own little kingdom. But understand, Jesus Christ did come. Yes. He did die yes. on the cross. Yes. He became the way, the truth, and the life for us. Amen. And now we are adopted into this kingdom, and we have a king who rules over us. And we are kingdom people. And if that didn't happen, then okay, let's just build our own little kingdoms. But we're kingdom-minded. We need to be kingdom-minded. And he ties it all up. I'm just about done. But he ties it all up in verse 21, Jesus does in this parable. And look what he says. So he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Are you rich toward God? Stuart Kathy, the original founder of Chick-fil-A, was a man who was rich toward God. He was rich in relationships. Oftentimes he would give personal words of encouragement to people. He was generous with his finances. He started, helped orphanages, fostered kids, and he even decided he was gonna close his restaurant on Sunday so his staff and his workers could be home with their families. And this is what he, this was one of his quotes and I thought it was so good. He said this about his business. If we focus on becoming better, our customers will demand we become bigger. That sounds like the American way, right? right. Become better, become bigger. But listen to what he said. If we focus on becoming better, our customers will demand that we become bigger. As followers of Jesus, 
If we focus on becoming more like Christ, others will look to learn about following Christ. Being rich toward God is valuing what God values over ourselves. Value in what God values over ourselves. Timothy said, be rich in good works. In other words, if you want to be rich towards God, be rich in good works. Do things for people. Jesus said, when you give a drink of water to somebody that needs it, you're doing it unto what? Him. That's what it means to be rich toward God. And this man missed it. He missed the opportunity to be rich toward God. The beginning of the story, we see a man say, give me what's mine. And Jesus said, stop right there. I'm not here to settle that. Let me tell you a little parable and tell you that we are kingdom minded. We should be kingdom minded people of God. Amen. We need to be rich toward God. And let me just tell you something that I hate to see. And some of you probably have these in your home or wear these. You ever notice anymore they have t-shirts that says property of Penn State. <laughs> property of Dallas Cowboys. Property of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And people wear them. And every time I see them, it makes me cringe. I think we should wear t-shirts that says property of Jesus Christ. Yes. I belong to him. I belong to him. And I see these t-shirts everywhere and I'm not knocking them, but I cringe every time I see them because people wearing property of this, property of that. No, we're kingdom. We're property of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. So maybe if nothing else, every time you see a t-shirt that says property of, maybe you ought to remind yourself, yes, I'm property of Jesus. Amen. I belong to him. Amen. Team, come and get ready. When I'm rich toward God, I will live a life of consistency. And I won't relish in the abundance of my possessions. But I'll relish in knowing Jesus Christ. Because there's nothing like having a relationship with Jesus. When I'm rich toward God. My heart will be drawn to him. My heart will be drawn to the kingdom and say, what can I do for the kingdom? How can I be better in the kingdom? How can I, you uh, heard me preach it, how can I advance the kingdom? Being rich toward God means that he is our greatest rich. We're rich when we know him. But we're nothing without him. Amen. Because there's nothing in this world that will satisfy him. 